Spring Lake. Renegade River in Spring Lake wants to buy your used handguns and hunting guns. Renegade River, your hunting, camping, and survival store. Stop in and check out their new and used firearms, sporting goods, Army and Navy supplies, and survival gear. Downtown Spring Lake, next to the police station. News Talk 1090 is the talk of Muskegon. Uh, welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. My name is Mike Hewitt, and in the studio today is Jim Riley. Jim, welcome back. Great to be here. Thank you. Listen, I got to talk in the first in the first segment today. I want to try to describe something for you, Jim, and then for every everyone listening. Um, we're approaching the second anniversary for the show. Wow, it really is. It's, Time it, goes by, dude. I'm telling you, it was just boom. All of a sudden, we're we're just two or three shows from getting to the uh, to the second anniversary, and so it causes me to look back and say, what's worked, what hasn't, what have we changed, do we like it? You know, over the course of that, I've had some really, really interesting guests. I um, have had uh, Congressman Heising has been on a couple times, and both uh, Senator Hansen and Senator, Senator Meekoff have both been on Meekoff a couple times. Um, we had General Adino on, U.S. U.S. Army West Point graduate. Very General, interesting show. General Adino. I, I got to tell you, it truly was a, for those folks that caught it, this, this guy was, I mean, he was there. It's not like he read it in a textbook and he was telling us what he thinks it should be. He was there. He was embedded in, in Kurdistan, and it was fascinating. Before that, we had the uh, Dr. Abbas, who was the president of the Kurdistan National Assembly of Syria. And so I'm looking at my little country show here and thinking, wow, i got some pretty good guests along the path. Ruth Johnson, Michigan Secretary of State, a couple times. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. But listen, I'm, all, I'm also a mind, I've talked about my sister Brenda, who lives in Nevada, a number of times over those couple years. And one of the things that has, has really rung true for me with what my sister Brenda has talked about was that she says, you guys are always talking 22 trillion this and 13 trillion that and uh, talking in, in big, gigantic uh, national or, 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 or geo-global issues. And she says, what does it mean to me? Can you take that down to what it means to me? And so I, I couple that train of thought with, as, as most of the listeners know, and I know you know, Jim, that over, over the course of the summer, I, I interviewed a bunch of um, primary challenging candidates. And listen, I had a great time with it. I don't know whether it was great radio or not, but primary challenges to me, I think, are critical to steering our state, and I'm a Republican, so I think it goes to help steering the Republican Party. Uh, but, but in the course of all those interviews, um, I, a couple of things happened. One of them was, was we had Matt Wiedentoff on a couple times. And what I want to get everyone to, to, to see this through my vein and where I'm going. Matt Wiedenhoff is one of those guys you meet once in a while that when he meets diversity, it, when he meets failure, by the way, because he lost. Um, dust off, get up, and he met diversity with a big, proud grin and said, okay, let's clap his hands, let's unite. Like, uh, like and I, I, in high school, I played football. So for me, it was a little bit reminiscent of just having your butt kicked in the first half. And you're in there and you're in halftime and the coach is going, what are we doing? We're winners. And he brought that kind of attitude to, to me personally. It had an effect on me to work with him during his primary challenge. And what it means to the show, I couple that, I couple that smile in the face of, 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 uh, of obstacles from Matt Wiedenhoff with my sister, who says, what's it mean to me? And I think, you know, I, I want to I keep the show going in the direction it's been with some of these really great interviews, but I want to interview regular people. I want to interview people like you and me that are out listening. And so I said, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new dimension to the show. We're going to start taking calls this coming week. I think that's a great idea. Um, and listen, I want to make it, I, I want to make it just not a political show, by the way. So if you're, you know, I'm kind of an old-fashioned father-knows-best guy. A lot of people that will mock me with my, my fedora hat. I, I always claim that when the fedora went out of style, so did respect and a couple other foundational things. And so I, I guess I'm, I'm saying not just politics. Let's get some personal issues. Uh, I was, a, I was a, a custodial parent, a non-custodial parent. I, I, I was a single parent raising teens for four daughters, by the way, for several years. I say that because let's not just stick to just the political let's add let's add like my sister would say what's it mean to us let's add some personal dynamic to the show what do you think jim 
Well, I've always believed that if you can get folks locally calling in, they're going to provide a, a window into what's important uh, in their world. And here we are in West Michigan. Uh, we're, we're even beyond West Michigan in the sense that Grand Rapids calls itself West Michigan. And we, have, we, we constantly hear the Grand Rapids media, which is pretty much the only media that's out there, with the exception of, of a few shows like yours. And, um, yes, I'm hearing from locals talking about things that are important to them here right on the west coast of Michigan, I think it's really, really going to be great if we can get those folks to call in, pass the word. Listen, I'm excited about this. I really am. And it goes back, you know, there's this really aggressive meeting going on at the political party level on a county political party. And there's there's a hundred and some people there. And uh, and a lot of a lot of contentious issues being 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 leveled and trying to resolved. And you got a guy like Matt Wiedenhoff who says so he stands up, he tells everybody, he said, "Listen, I just I, I was I just just lost in a primary. Amanda Price won. So what do you do? Do you, you just go home and take your bat and ball and go home, or do you put Amanda Price's journey on it and try to uh, jersey on and try to make some headway?" Listen, I think he's on the right path, but I think we can apply that go get him positive attitude across the board on all of these different topics that affect us in life. And that's what we're going to try to do. So, listen, the the call-in number beginning next week is going to be 855-357-1911. Now, folks, what you didn't see when I was reading that number is I got I'm watching Jim Riley. He's looking at the normal number for the show and he's looking at me going that's not the number. I'm looking at our regular 231 prefix, and, and I'm it's going, not there. No, I'm saying 855-357-1911. That's going to be the call-in number. And I, when you say local, man, I'm reaching out to local people here in Muskegon County. But it's 855-357-1911 for a reason. That's what's going to start next next Sunday at noon because... I, I don't care where you are. If you're in the United States of America and you're listening to this show on iHeart.com, call us. That's how I feel about it. iHeart.com is monstrous. It's huge. Uh, speaking of Matt Wiedentoft, Matt Wiedentoft is going to be uh, in the room down the hall. I smile because one of the things that caused me to, to change my mind was that, uh, that, what's that happy song? You've heard the happy song? Yes. The guy's singing about a room without a roof. So I'm going to go, Wiedenhoft is going to be down the hall in a different, you know, that's, never, never mind. I love the image of that song that it, that it creates. It really does. It makes, it's positive. I love how it makes a person feel. And that's really where I started thinking about the show is with that song. I said, I said, Jeepers, how can a, how can you do a talk show that makes you feel the way that song feels when you actually listen to it? That was really the foundation for me saying, I need to add some dynamics to the show. Make sense? Well, I think it's great. And, and again, uh, if you're out there listening or you know some folks who you know have opinions um, and you can you know, encourage them to make the calls, that's the interaction that brings the people's voice. Because you know that only during this little tiny window just before the election are these politicians interested in hearing from you. It's amazing how they all seem to disappear in that second week in November. They just, they're just they not all that that uh, excited to hear your, your phone calls or accept your visits to their offices. So um, this is an opportunity for us to get the voice out. I think it's absolutely great. I'll tell you one thing. When you talk about the leaders that only listen at election time, I don't know how many listeners this show actually has, but the one thing I know for a fact is that the leaders you are talking about listen to the show. I know that because they're waiting to see what sensational uh, truism I share in their <laughs> so I know for a fact they're listening. I say that because if you folks have have a concern that you wish they were listening to, they're listening. Well, you know that's that's an ex- extremely good point because that's right. Uh, this is this is sort of a roundabout way to get uh, an opinion, a request, uh, uh, an interest uh, presented to the electeds out there. And uh, again. They're not really interested uh, pretty much 360 days a year, uh, and uh, now they are. Yeah, I, I really think that's true. Now, listen, on the flip side, I kept talking about personal because, you, you know, with the father knows best mentality from the 50s that I bring to it or or the other side of that on a personal basis for a person that's got a, a personal question. On the other side of it, I'm I'm unbiased. So if, you're, if you've got some troubles and everyone in your little world has got an opinion, but they've all got an interest in what the what the problem is. I don't have an interest in it, so call with that also, because it goes back to my my sister's point. When we talk about this this lifestyle 
um, that conservatism calls for. And she says, well, yeah, great, but how does that affect me in my personal life? These things are all tied together. They're not separate. Well, in other words, you're saying uh, pick up the phone no matter what's on your mind. Absolutely is what I'm saying. Well, that's why I, that's I would, why I did the the, the toll free number because I don't want somebody thinking that oh jeepers I'm I'm too far away no you're not call now I didn't know the prefix is eight five five eight five five is that toll is free. a toll free number I did toll not free. know that well, now, I'm listen, glad you clarified it you may get some gun people out there that will easily remember the number because eight five five and then it turns into three fifty seven nineteen eleven which are two guns course, two two fabulous calibers of very very popular gun oh, 357 yeah. and uh, 1911 45 oh yeah that's that's what i was thinking so as i talk about some spot on or targeted dialogue well you know i think it's also we've got to remember we've got a big election coming up uh, in a uh, little more than a month and of course the bigger election for the presidency uh, in a little more than 2 years but local issues matter and communicating, uh, I, th- I think the louder you communicate uh, and, and the more consistent you are able to let your electeds understand what's going on, um, the, the better chance we have of getting some change for the better. Because think about, I, j- I just saw an article this morning that the, uh, the, the forces on the left, the Democrat Party primarily, are pushing very, very hard this entire concept of the right or the Republicans' war on women. And it's a worthy discussion at, at some point in, in, in one of the shows. But, but they have won the communication war so far. At least they've won the battles because they stay consistent. They stay on message. They demonize anyone who disagrees with them. And this is an opportunity for us. If you're an elected official and if the only thing you're hearing are people calling in and saying, I'm sick and tired of the war on women, you've got to start doing things. If that's the only input you're getting as an elected official... You're going to respond to that much more so than you are um, to the other side. You know, what's, the, the whole concept of the war on women is just a f- fascinating thing to me. There is no war on anybody. If there is, it's caused by the people that are directing the the, the insult. Uh, Cindy Duran, who was a candidate, I interviewed her. I asked her, what about the war on women? She looked at me, there's no war on women. What are you talking about? We had Angela Regas on here several, a couple times. Uh, how are you doing with the war on women? She's going, what war on women? These are leaders in their community, and they're successful leaders in their community. Ruth Johnson, our Secretary of State, uh, yesterday I went to, um, um, I attended the Republican State Committee meeting in Lansing. Uh, a, approaching 50%, if not maybe more, of the leaders inside the Republican Party of the state of Michigan are female. And I sit there, I was sitting around a bench. It kind of watching the people come and go, and I'm sipping on my coffee, and I was thinking about, about the concept of the war on women. Going, I wonder if they realize that the war on women from the Republican Party is 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 pretty close to a lion's share female. It just is idiocy. Well, the point is that the folks who are hearing this, who are buying into it, don't hear what you just said. They don't hear the the reality. As a matter of fact, if you think about this, the folks who are uh, accusing the other political party of engaging in a war on women, that's the party of Bill Clinton. That is the party, and who, who revere Bill Clinton, that is the party of Ted Kennedy, the Lion of the Senate. That is the party of Anthony Weiner, and on and on and on. Um, it, we should be winning this argument, but you cannot win an argument or discussion if you do not engage. And yes. you can't just say, uh, hey, we're not uh, as evil as you suggest. Uh, as uh, Adolf Hitler's propaganda minister, uh, Goebbels, said, uh, a lie, if repeated often enough, becomes a truth. It is. That's a fact. So when I when I listen to the people that are that are demanding uh, quotas, they're they're measuring, they're they're measuring um, e- e- equalness by numbers that they're arbitrarily picking. We need to have X percent of this this kind of person, X percent of that kind of person, and I and I listen to them. And two things occur to me. First off is that they fail in their own numbers. They're not achieving their numbers that they're demanding we all... we all In terms of percentage of percentage their diversity. Of, uh, yeah. Percentage of their diversity, they themselves fail. Uh, you look at the, the guy that's uh, um, challenging uh, the, the Democrat opponent in the Terry Land race for Senate. Uh, this, this guy, uh, he, <laughs> it's, it's almost laughable. 
what's the 67 uh, percent of of the females on his staff are paid less well the females on his staff are paid 60 only 67 percent of the males yeah, gary peters uh, is a good, yeah. pure hypocrite it, absolutely it, this is the guy that was the keynote speaker at the greater detroit S- democrat socialist of america party you go uh, do people really realize where these people's minds are at Mom stand back a little bit as a, as a little bit of a Jeffersonian or, or liberty-leaning conservative. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what your gender is. I want someone that's going to advance the cause of limited government and, 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 and fiscally responsible limited constitutional government. If you're willing to advance those causes, I don't care who or what you are. Well, it would be nice to get these phone calls who are challenging your view. We're going to get them. Listen, in the meantime, we're going to go to a break, folks. We'll be right back. You're listening to News Talk 1090, WKBZ. Be a survivor, not a statistic. Renegade River in Spring Lake has new and used handguns, hunting guns, sporting goods, and survival gear. Protect your rights and your freedom. Ask about their CPL classes. Renegade River, next to the police station in downtown Spring Lake. Service One Federal Credit Union is committed to helping our community grow and succeed. That's why they are a proud sponsor of our local high school football. Service One Federal Credit Union, member-driven and community-focused. 1075 East Sherman Boulevard or 1625 East Wind Drive, just south of the Lake Small of Muskegon. Hello, gorgeous. Fair Minerals just won its ninth Glammy Award for Best Prestige Foundation. And to celebrate, we're offering risk-free trials of Fair Minerals makeup to all women nationwide. That's right. Every woman who calls right now can get a full-size, risk-free trial of Bare Minerals makeup, plus a free five-piece makeup set. For yours, call 1-800-603-9459. This is an exclusive radio-only offer you don't want to miss. Bare Minerals Foundation gives you flawlessly beautiful coverage with a no-makeup feel, and it's clinically proven to promote clearer, healthier-looking skin. No wonder it's won nine Glammys in a row, and now you can try Bare Minerals makeup for yourself. Call now to find out how you can participate in our nationwide risk-free trial and join the millions who've already tried Bare Minerals makeup and fallen in love with their skin again. Plus, we'll send you a free five-piece makeup set, our gift to you. Hurry, don't miss this exclusive radio-only offer. 1-800-603-9459. 1-800-603-9459. For over 50 years, Menards has proudly featured American-made products. All this week, we salute these products with Menards Made in the USA sale. Give any room a great new look with top quality carpet by Citation. Made in Dalton, Georgia, Brook Run Plush is great for high traffic areas like game rooms and family rooms. Available in stone or wild honey and woven back, Brook Run Plush Carpet by Citation is just 99 cents a square foot. Save big money at Menards. If your business is already too big and you don't want any more customers, then don't advertise on the radio. John, owner-proprietor of That's My Froyo yo made the mistake of advertising on the radio and, to his dismay, increased revenue substantially. I almost sold out a cranberry custard flavor in one day. That really ticked me off. But if you're not like John and you'd love your business to get even bigger, contact us immediately. Check out Newstalk1090.com keyword advertise. The Muskegon Museum of Art is pleased to welcome the exhibit Art Quilts of Nancy Crow, Transformation Quilts. This exhibit will be held August 14th through October 26th, featuring pieces from Nancy Crow's recent mono series, along with her vibrant colored pattern quilts from previous works. If you'd like more information on exhibit times and ticket information, go to www.muskegonartmuseum.org or call 231-720-2570. Renegade River and Spring Lake wants to buy your used handguns and hunting guns. Renegade River, your hunting, camping, and survival store. Stop in and check out their new and used firearms, sporting goods, Army and Navy supplies, and survival gear. Downtown Spring Lake, next to the police station. The Talk of Muskegon. News Talk 1090, WKBZ. Uh, Welcome back to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hey, Jim, do you remember when the show started out as the Renegade River Show? Yes, I do. That was one of the big changes. i got to tell you, that was a big one for me. I wrung my hands for, like, weeks on, do I really want to do that or not? Because I liked that name. Um, But I was afraid that some folks thought it was a uh, promo for the shop, and that was it. 
Well, I think I, I agree, and I think the fact is that this is a personality-driven show. You've got a great radio personality. In person, it's not quite as good, but certainly on the radio, it's pretty spectacular. Was that, and, <laughs> was that an incentive for folks to call in? <laughs> That's right. Well, <laughs> I, I, let's keep repeating this phone number, because uh, even though you can't use it today... You're talking about the 855 1911 well, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, so Say go ahead. Say that again. What was that number? I don't know. Holy moly, I've said it to you like 10 times. Well, it ain't going to work. i got to write it down. 855-357-1911. Folks, it won't work today, but it will be a, It will be live next, next uh, Sunday at noon. And questions about, you know, not just politics, not just, as you suggested, even, even lifestyle issues, but, uh, I mean, you, you could be... Uh, a uh, a more diverse version of Oprah, uh, if, if we get enough kind of calls. But there's a war against men. I don't think that will work. Well, there may may or may not be. You but do, but even about there, the show, there's a war against men. Well, there's certainly a war against young men. Well, I, don't, comes... I don't qualify there. I'm safe. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> um, you have an opportunity to get your voice heard and uh, to to uh, hear responses from the host as to what your thoughts are. I'm excited about it. I really am. Um, listen, one of the things I wanted to mention this week is midweek, um, midweek there was a vote in Scotland to secede or remain a part of the United Kingdom. Which amazingly got a lot of uh, play on the major television media here in the U.S. I mean, huge on both sides of the press aisle, the conservative, modestly conservative networks, along with the hard left, left-leaning Yes. Um, you know, the Communist News Network, etc. Um, but one of the things that struck me about it, uh, there's several things that struck me about it, I wanted to kick around with a little bit uh, with you today, Jim. The The first thing that hit me was that uh, that Scotland had the right to vote for secession from the same governing body that we had to fight a, a war of independence and then refight that same war in 1812 to break free and stay free from them. I found it fascinating that they could just have a vote or up or down vote and either secede or not. And especially from our vantage point, because of st- and I'm not a, a, just to make sure everyone knows, I am not a secessionist. So I'm not calling for that when I say these words. But here we are in the Union of States where a state no longer has the right, according to the Supreme Court, and a war that was fought no longer has the right to secede. But, but we're all watching, we're all watching with interest as to Scotland voluntarily saying yes or no to secession from that country we had to fight to break away from. It well, just, just seemed like an oddity to me. Well, there's a clear dissatisfaction uh, worldwide with the leaders of various countries. And um, short of uh, the, the uh, amazingly, what about uh, two decades ago, Egypt and Libya agreed to form a united nation, which uh, that concept didn't last very long. But most of the geopolitical moves we've seen in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years have been breakups, not combinations. The Soviet Union tried to combine lots of uh, places, and and that didn't work at all. And so we're seeing that that whole concept because people are unhappy. They say, uh, for instance, the Scots are saying, uh, you're over there in in London, and you're making rules that affect us, and, and you are showing favoritism to folks uh, that, that are at odds with, with what we believe our future ought to be. Uh, Canada, on a regular basis, seems to have that same situation with um, Quebec. I think one of the reasons that uh, this particular issue uh, was uh, as interesting to the, the liberal media uh, was that the biggest decision that the Scots had to make wasn't just leaving the United Kingdom. It was what particular currency they would adopt and this is i know it's a little wonkish but i think it's kind of important because for those who like the idea of the european union or worldwide government which is most of the folks on the left the scots had earlier said those who were interested in splitting said that they wanted to uh have their own currency or keep the uh keep the pound because anybody who knows anything about worldwide finance knows that the european Union, the, the euro is, is collapsing, and uh, uh, it is not, <laughs> it's not something that anybody uh, in Scotland really wanted to hook up. But then, during this campaign, England, Great Britain, said, we're not going to allow you to use the pound. And that, even though it's wonkish, that concept, I believe, is why the, uh, the Scottish people voted uh, fairly closely, but to stay within that union. 
at some point, if they clear up that uh, that uh, currency issue, uh, they may break apart. That's one of the main reasons, by the way, why um, Quebec remains in Canada today. It's finance. It is. It's about money. It was also about security because they, some of the Scots that I watched interviewed feared feared being outside of the umbrella of the military complex that uh, Great Britain. Provides. And that's a legitimate fear, you bet. Yeah, well, given given everything that's going on in the world, but I think your point your point is probably greater in terms of financial currency, or in this case, financial. Uh, uh, it would have been some significant upheaval. Um, well, that's it, and, and I think we're, we, we're Catalonia, which is uh, the area in Spain where um, Barcelona is located. Uh, the, the the world is is not happy with centralized government, even though the leaders and the, and the powers that be are, are the, to them that's that's the daily bread and butter. Um, uh, we we've seen even in Europe where they've gone to the European Union, which is able to put in laws and and policies and taxes without any vote of the countries that are within the European Union. And there's a lot of dissatisfaction with that. Listen, there are some real conflicting messages in the world we live in anymore, and. I'm looking at a picture right now, folks. It's a, um, a, I don't know who the person is. All I can see is a hand. It's a hand and a wrist extended straight up, and in the person's hand is an American flag. This person has just became, it's, it's following a naturalization ceremony. And and <laughs> so on one hand, you have a group of people that, that are, are following our immigration laws, and, and, and this person is clearly celebrating becoming a U.S. citizen. And then you have the conflicting message, whereas out, especially in our western states, where there are schools that have, that have banned certain days for you to wear a U.S. flag t-shirt or, or have banned and pulled down the flags from their own poles out in front of their schools in an, in an attempt to not offend anybody. But to, that, to me, that's a conflicting message. It was a conflicting message that Scotland had the right to secede, and yet a, any state in the un, Union regardless of the percent of a vote of its people, does not have a right to secede. I see Reuters, and I hate to say that they and I agreed, but they must have found it unique also because they did a poll, and in their poll it says one out of four, so 25% of the Americans that they polled um, viewed secession as an option to control Washington, D.C., I think that's a fascinating number given the fact that we've had, there's no campaign, it's not a primary issue, it's, it's, just, it's just a concept that's still floating real strong and real prevailing in our culture um, because there are a lot of people, to your point, that are just have absolutely been overwhelmed with a general lack of leadership in Washington, D.C., or those folks that are leading, leading us in clearly and absolutely the wrong direction towards globalization, as you point out, with the EU. Uh, and some folks like me, we're not... I'm not interested in that. Well, there's not going to be any states who are going to be uh, seceding from the Union. We have different rules uh, in, in Great Britain. That was a voluntary agreement. But we do have situations going on in California where people are interested in perhaps splitting the state up. We do have folks right here in, in West Michigan who are not at all happy with the enormous amounts of, of tax money that has been diverted from the rest of the state and is now pouring in in even greater quantities than it has seen in the last decades into the city of Detroit and perhaps some of the other cities who have, with Democrat, 100 percent Democrat leadership, have driven their cities into absolute bankruptcy and made them so uh, uncomfortable for any kind of business, any kind of uh, student or parent who's interested in their child getting educated, that the, not only have they driven them into bankruptcy, they have driven them out of, of the population. And what we're seeing now, uh, well, we're going to see it uh, certainly after the election when our politicians finally tell us what they're planning on doing with the roads. But we're going to see a massive, massive new tax in the state of Michigan and an un, a, a, un, totally unconscionable amount of the money raised is going to go into the Democrat-controlled cities to fix, and I use that in quotes, but to fix the mess that was initially and uh, continues to be the disaster of Democrat socialist leadership. We see, we have it right here, of course, uh, in the city of Muskegon Heights and to a lesser extent I, in been, the city of Muskegon. Listen, I've been very, very consistent on a point that I, I, I adamantly believe. There is no amount of money that can be poured into those cities that will fix anything without fixing the culture that caused it in the first place. When, when you have citizens that are approaching 50% functionally illiterate, citizens that... that 
were multi multiple generations, uh, each generation weaker and in a greater percentage of entitlement or or recipient of 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 federal and state and county funding. Those those are not recipes for success. And so pouring more money in, it reminds me of of uh, Johnson who who uh, at the time thought you know Detroit was a spectacular had the highest the highest per capita income in the United States. Fifth for, largest city in the country in 1964. And then Johnson helped it. And he just poured a boatload of socialist money and socialist-driven programs that utterly eroded uh, family values, um, family work ethic, individual, individual identity and work ethic. And so the idea that Michigan or the federal government now can fix a problem that was caused with money, with more money, is lunacy. Let me just, let me add to this. So a lot of people don't quite get this. The money that's going to be poured into and has been, we've already had a few billion, billion in the city. That's an awful lot of money. We've already had a few billion dollars that has been earmarked or even spent at this point uh, just within the last couple of years to fix Detroit. This money is not going to the residents of Detroit this money isn't going to make sure that the schools are working. It's, it's hardly even going to any kind of infrastructure. It is going to primarily white and some black connected businesses who are sucking up the money, going into the union. Certainly it's going into the union pension, which, of course, had been uh, stolen from by the, by the union members and the union leaders within the city of Detroit. This isn't money that's going to help Detroit. This is money that's going to connected, politically connected businesses. And we just saw, yes, uh, just this week, just I believe it was yesterday or Thursday, was the, um, the kickoff, uh, the first day, the, uh, the um, groundbreaking of the $650 million new stadium for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. And this is going to be funded almost, enti- almost entirely with monies, uh, bonds that will be backed and initiated by the state of Michigan. So, uh, folks, uh, your money is going to not to fix the issue. It is going to perpetuate, just like just like our foreign aid for, for decades and decades and decades has done in Africa. Our money has not gone to help the people. It is going to keep the despots in power. Well, the, but the, the, the selling guys that's used is that it's built, it's, it's, it's targeting to rebuild infrastructure. The problem with it is, is that that doesn't, 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 solve the problem of what happened to the infrastructure. So we're gonna, it reminds me of when I, I, I grew up in a Pontiac area, and at the time there was what was called the Crystal Lake Projects. And the Crystal Lake Projects were, were government, subs, not, totally government, not subsidized, totally government housing. And they were absolutely destroyed by the people within them, and so the government, in its infinite wisdom, rebuild them. Okay, And then, this is going to shock you, but they completely destroyed those buildings again. Okay. They did that three times before they just said, "Off, oh, fooey, let's just plow it over." And <laughs> these things, these things are—they just bad begets bad. And so you've got cultures where f- forget where the where the forget where the high school or the educational process is at. Each generation is less equipped to help their own with education than the generation that went before them. So it's spiraling downhill, and frankly, it doesn't matter whether they've got a new a new palace for rich people to come visit, which is really what you've just described, because I, the average person can't do $100. It's going to be smaller. Actually, this is great. The new uh, uh, Red Wings Stadium. How much is will, a ticket to get in, do you think? Will be smaller than the current Joe Lewis. What's it cost to get in nowadays to watch those? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I I know it's it's got to be. Uh, you, you have to be connected. I doubt too many of the locals within the city of Detroit who live there would ever be able to afford it. That's the point. So it's almost almost like a Roman story. I mean, where you're uh, it you're, is. you're building a coliseum in, in absolute squalor. And of course, the rich people have got their guards and are being. <laughs> I'm just. I'm, I'm seeing it really negatively because none of it is going to foster any correction with the folks themselves that need the help. To your point. Well, p- people feel uh, certainly uh, conservatives feel that that government uh, is not the solution. It is the problem, and we do feel helpless when we do see what what I believe, and certainly the situation here in Detroit is, was supported wholeheartedly by both the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. And when you when you sit here in West Michigan and you see this kind of, I believe, financial abuse going on, you say, well, if we can't fix the politics, is it possible for us to split off from the rest of the state so that we don't have to have this kind of thing coming at us again and again and again? And let me just add one little quick thing here. 
The biggest reason, the single biggest reason that most of our cities, counties, and townships are going bankrupt is they are underfunding, and they have underfunded their retiree pensions and their retiree health uh, health care plans. The, those when they retire, they get a, a health care plan that you wouldn't believe. It, it supersedes Medicare they, in many cases. Do they underfund them or do they rob the funds? They did both in Detroit, but but uh, but the biggest problem was that they had what's called a defined benefit plan. Very few companies have defined benefit plans any longer because they are they they guarantee uh, pensions and things that are just unsustainable. Well. When the Republicans agreed and the Democrats agreed that we're going to send this initially, the initial $300 million from the state of Michigan to, to prop up the pension plan, the, uh, the Republican Party said, look, one of the things we want you to do is to do what smart businesses do, and that is change your pension plan like the state of Michigan did. The, the state of Michigan, if you're a new state of Michigan employee, uh, starting back in the Angler days, you have a defined uh, uh, Kind of you def- define contribution plan, not a defined benefit plan, and they wanted to. They said, "Look, here's fiscal responsibility in Detroit. All new employees, we're not going to harm the old employees, but all new employees will have a similar plan to what we have in the state of Michigan." And the uh, leaders of Detroit said, "No, we're not going to accept that." Now think about that. We're writing them a check for three hundred million dollars. We have control of the House, the Senate, and the governors. And we say, "Look, you're going to do something prudent." They say, "No," and our government bends over and says, okay, no sweat. Go do the same thing that brought you down. Folks, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll pick up right there. This is News Talk 1090 WKBZ. Be a survivor, not a statistic. Renegade River in Spring Lake has new and used handguns, hunting guns, sporting goods, and survival gear. Protect your rights and your freedom. Ask about their CPL classes. Renegade River, next to the police station in downtown Spring Lake. Make your job better, more enjoyable, actually fun. How? With the iHeartRadio app. It lets you listen at work to your favorite radio stations, like this one. Or listen to the station you build from over 20 million songs. And that's going to make your workday better. Millions of songs, thousands of stations, one free app. iHeartRadio is that easy. Download the iHeartRadio app today or listen online at iHeartRadio.com. Service One Federal Credit Union is committed to helping our community grow and succeed. That's why they are a proud sponsor of our local high school football. Service One offers accounts for youths of all ages, toddlers through college. Open a certificate of deposit with a $100 minimum. Save money and watch it grow. Service One Federal Credit Union, member-driven, community-focused at 1075 East Sherman Boulevard or 1625 East Wind Drive just south of the Lake Small and Muskegon. Federally insured by the NCUA. Fox News Radio, I'm Paul Stevens. At least 70,000 Syrian Kurds trying to escape from Syria into Turkey and away from ISIS militants in the last 24 hours. And now we're hearing that number may be growing as high as 100,000. Fox's John Huddy in the Mideast Bureau. The search, meantime, continuing in northeast Pennsylvania for Eric Freen, suspected of shooting and killing one state trooper and wounding another last week. However, residents in part of the search area are getting a break. People are now being allowed back into their homes for the first time in many cases in over 24 hours, but police are still urging people to use extreme caution in this area. The search is still ongoing, and if you looked at Twitter over the last 24 hours, the ATF actually tweeted a photo of their guys searching these dense woods here in the, by the Pocono Mountains. Fox's Brian Yanis in Canadensis, Pennsylvania. Fox News, we report, you decide. This report is brought to you by the new Total Traffic app. Thunderstorms are likely later today with a high near 60. Tonight, partly cloudy should dry out a low of 43. Then sunshine for tomorrow and Tuesday. The high tomorrow 62, Tuesday's high 68. News Talk 1090, WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. For times when you can't hear live traffic reports on your radio, download our new Total Traffic app. Get the simplest view of traffic conditions all around you. Available for iPhone and Android, the Total Traffic app is the easiest way to see the road ahead. Renegade River in Spring Lake wants to buy your used handguns and hunting guns. Renegade River, your hunting, camping, and survival store. Stop in and check out their new and used firearms, sporting goods, Army and Navy supplies, and survival gear. Downtown Spring Lake, next to the police station.
Uh, welcome back to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hey, Jim, do me a favor. What was that phone number? 855-357-1911. Wow, I'm my, getting it down. I'm proud of you. Write it down. We keep, Don't call today, but next week, <coughs> 855 and then just two guns. 357 and 1911. Makes sense when you think about it. Yes, it most certainly does. It I can. love it. I love it. Especially since one of our sponsors is a gun shop. I don't think that's a coincidence. Well, you're one of those bad people out there, we know. <laughs> I, thank those, you very much for noticing, Jim. Those gun shops, them them boys is bad. Listen, I'm reading on the Drudge Report, Rand, and the caption is, Obama is abusing our laws. Then he goes on to say that the president has created a lawless atmosphere in Washington, D.C. What do you think? Is, is Rand Paul off the reservation, or is he right on the money? Well, I think he's right on the money. I mean, and, and just, just to get classic is is the uh, massive Obamacare bill, which was very precise in, what, 70-some pages, and or 70,000-some pages. And, um, Stacked up taller uh, than you. As, as the, uh, the, the various parts that had been uh, passed by the House and the Senate, signed by the president, promised by the president... Uh, as those came up uh, to be enforced, the president just waved his wand and said, well, for the time being, we're just not going to enforce it. That's lawlessness. It, exactly. He goes on to say that Hillary had that 3 a.m. moment and she didn't answer the telephone. And now if she's actually a presidential candidate, and it appears she is, although I'm still not convinced, but assuming she actually is a candidate and, and assuming she wins the nomination, and I'm not convinced of either one of those points, but let's assume... Whoever runs against her is going to be replaying her own commercial and then showing flashes of Benghazi. Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, it's it's a made <laughs> it's a made for an attack video ad. Um, I'm with you. I, I'd be surprised that that Hillary Clinton will be nominated. She's clearly running. You know, one thing uh, just in terms of uh, clarifying what goes on with candidates, and you and I have both been candidates for office. You are running, but you may not have officially declared yourself. And things may change, uh, or things that most certainly are going to change from the time you start thinking about running. But once you start thinking about running, you're running. And, and you may not officially declare. But uh, she's, a, I mean, it's obvious she is running for president. And there are quite a few, uh, certainly we know on the Republican side, but certainly quite a few on the Democrat side. But... Uh, if I if I had a child who was interested in the military, and normally I would I would be the most supportive uh, of of anyone, I would steer them away from the military today. It, it appears to me, especially what did we have last week? Three thousand of our soldiers. Now these are people who are trained to kill. That's their job. They're being sent net down to Africa in an Ebola infested uh, country. What skills do they bring other than the fact that they may very well, as doctors in these in these suits are getting Ebola, who knows what's going to happen to these people? This they, is those, wrong. Those 3,000 people should, be, should have been sent to our southern border to make sure that Ebola and everything else, and ISO and everything is not coming across to kill us. We have laws. We have immigration laws. The immigration system isn't broken. It is not being enforced. Meanwhile, in that same little blurb of, of uh, outtakes from Rand Paul's comments, he's urging or he calls for, he calls for diversity in the GOP. I got to tell you, I, I, I get it, but when I go to the GOP meetings, and I'm, it's like I was talking about in the first segment, when I go to the GOP meetings, um, I, I see absolute diversity. I see, in fact, I see it almost exactly to the numbers of representative of our popula. And so when I, it, it's, it seems that there's some folks, including Rand Paul, now maybe he's just wanting to change the image because, and the image is fascinating of the GOP when you, when you consider that it is the party of the civil rights, it was the party of the civil war against slavery, it was, it's been the party of liberty f throughout. So it's fascinating that now it seems to be sh uh, sh shackled, for lack of better words, with the concept that it's not diverse. But when I attend the meetings, that's not what I'm seeing. Now, when I look at the Democrat side, I see an unusually large mix of what I of not representative of the population whatsoever. To me, it's a fault. It's a lie. It's it's a it's it's window dressing mix, and I I don't. So I, I look at Rand Paul, who I typically agree with on most issues, and I'm thinking, what are you calling for here? Well, I think that it's pretty clear, and 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 the numbers, uh, you know, tell the tell the story. The Republican Party does not have too many members. 
nor does it have too many voters who are in the black community in the United States. But the last election, a... uh, 90 plus percent, and consistently yeah. for the last 40 years anyway, the black community in the United States has viewed themselves as being Democrats and voting for Democrat uh, politician. Now, I would suggest, uh, as opposed to uh, the panderer, in this case, uh, uh, Senator Ron Paul, or not Ron Paul, Rand Paul, that um, maybe it would be the black community that ought to start looking at itself and consider the Republican Party as opposed to the Republican Party change its uh, platform, because the reality is that we have, again, right across the street from us here, we have a, a what a one-time, uh, one of the most pro- uh, prosperous cities here in Muskegon County, Muskegon Heights. It has been run for 20, 30, 40, 50 years by Democrat politicians, and it has been run into bankruptcy. We just talked about Detroit. My question is, and as opposed to attacking the Republican Party for its, quote, lack of diversity, which is a true attack, we don't have many black Americans that attend our our uh, county parties and our conventions. I've been there. You've been there. It's the truth. But the question I would say is, what is what is it with the black community that they continue to support those very same folks who have destroyed their cities, their families, their income, and their hopes for any kind of a future? Yeah, the only difference between you and I is that, first off, I acknowledge I acknowledge your point about the, 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 the black community in America obviously have leaned Democrat in the voting trend peaking with President Obama, and I don't even necessarily... Ninety percent isn't a lean. Listen, I don't even blame them, though, for, for supporting Obama based on the idea of, of America finally having its first first African-American, et cetera. I get it. But listen, the, but here's, here's the part. When, when I'm looking at grassroots activists, and that's probably I should have prefaced what I was looking at, when I'm looking at the people that I'm attending, and I don't agree with what you said on, in terms of a, of a local party mix. So I, when I went to the state committee mini- meeting yesterday, if I were to sat there with a calculator and did the math of the total attendees along with a Hispanic or black mix, that was, it's pretty representative of the population in total. The same, roughly the same percent of African Americans were there as you'll, if you do the, if you look at national statistics of what the representation Well, that may have changed in, in the total. last few years then. It's right. just truly, truly different. Um, they were, there were roughly six people that addressed the general, the general session. And of the six people, two of them were black. And I'm, and I'm, listen, listen, I wasn't going, oh my good, great, great, there's a black person. I don't look at things that way. There were six people and each one of them had some pretty good things to say, period. There, I saw six Americans talk to a room of 150 Americans. And I think the folks that sit around doing color tests are are liars and racists. Well, there we go, because guess what? Uh, one of the premier candidates to be the Republican nominee <laughs> for the presidency of the United States of America is Rand Paul. And uh, that's what he said. But, he, but listen to his, in defense of him, though, he may very well be addressing the point that you've made, which is the overwhelming percentage of the black community in America voting Democrat. Which to me is, to me the question is: Is do you want a do you want a handout or a helping hand? Do you want a, an entitlement which will put a ceiling on your possibilities, or do you want unlimited opportunity? To me, those are the the bottom line definitions of the two parties. So I, I can't put myself in the mind of of a black American. But I put my own self in that mind, and and I know which one I want. I want opportunity. I want unbridled opportunity only limited to what I'm willing to put into it, not what somebody else is willing to do. Yeah, but you're not a black resident of Detroit or Muskegon Heights. Um, I I think there's there's two different— I'd get up and move, by the way. Well, again, you're not the typical resident of that area. You are different from them. I, I think there's a difference here. And and what I see with the Republican Party, and it it scares me, there are two ways to attract— uh, a, a demographic, uh, be it a, a women or uh, any kind of minority or what have you. One is to offer them, as you've said, opportunity and contrast what you offer to what your opponent is offering. And it would seem to me that it would make perfect sense to go to the, the, the black leaders, go to the black population and say, look, you've, you've got De- uh, Detroit, you've got these cities that here in Michigan that you've, you've your leaders with total support of the Democrat Party have destroyed. Um, here's an here's an alt- alternative way that will actually be good for you and for the people that you represent. Or the other alternative, which is appears to me to be where the the Republican Party may be heading, and that is, you follow the Democrat Party for the longest time because you thought you were getting free stuff. 
we're going to offer you more free stuff. That type of pandering scares me, um, especially when you get a leading candidate uh, at the head of the Republican Party saying, we are the problem. The Republican Party is the problem. Um, we know where politicians go with other people's money. They offer it as free stuff to get votes, just kinda, like the Democrats. It's kind of surprised, surprising from Rand Paul. I've been saying on the air now for about two years that that roughly one-third of the Republican Party is centrist to leaning left. But that's never where I would have placed Rand Paul, in in my mind at least, uh, on the... the, the uh, you know the the scale of what republicanism is from from center all the way to the hard right when i look at him he'd have been somewhere in the middle of that pack leaning libertarian there's nothing libertarian about what he's saying in these in these comments he's made well he's running he's he's again he's a he's a politician uh politicians hire uh very very expensive uh, aides to uh, give them advice as to how to get elected apparently uh, he's listening to those who are telling him uh to uh to Essentially, as far as I would call it, pander. But um, I, I, uh, I, I don't think that's a winning combination when it comes to primaries for the Republican nominee. No, I don't think it's winning in the primary. But he's he's somebody somewhere. The, these consultants, because it's true on a state level, it is a, at least as true on a state level it is, as it is in Washington that these types of comments are being told by people that have done the math and say these are the things you need to say to win. And it, to me. It blows my mind because I find these things insulting. Well, this is what turns people off to politics when all of a sudden all these differences meld together and it turns out that the difference between the, the political candidates uh, is essentially nothing. One says I'm going to give you a ladder to know the, nowhere and one says I'm going to offer you a helping hand up and then I'm going to get out of your way and let you win, lose, or draw on your own. I prefer that path. It make more sense to me that Rand Paul would stand up and say to the black community, we are here. We've got the answers. We can make your cities better using our policies and our ideas, uh, rather than saying the Republican Party is, uh, is it should be faulted for its lack of uh, diversity. I, I think that's a, that's a wrong way to go. So someone says, "Well, okay, Mike, if you were if you were leading, what would Detroit look like?" You know, and that, that's a mocking question to me that uh, I don't have the answer. Says, "Yeah, I do have the answers. Let's look at what Detroit was for the fifty years before." the Johnson administration's helping hand. Uh, I, you get pictures of it. There's pictures all over the Internet. You can look at, you can, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not trying to paint it out as a paradise because it had issues, but it was a safe community. It was prospering. Again, it was, the, to your point, it was the fifth, the fifth largest city in the United States, and it had the highest income per capita. And you go, <laughs> how come we wanted to deviate from that beautiful combination? People say, Mike, it was a car business that, that fell apart. Car business didn't fall apart in the 60s. That just 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 not true. Well, because both political parties were at uh, in a competition to see who could give as much or the most amount of, quote, free stuff. And again, the free stuff didn't go to the little people. It didn't go to the citizens. It went to the connected politicians. My gosh, do you have any doubt that Kwame Kilpatrick would still be the mayor of Detroit, had he not been such a moron using his, his uh, cell phone. Um, the facts are that for whatever reason, these people get, uh, uh, these leaders within these, these uh, communities get reelected because they have no other choice. I remember when I was a, a, a candidate for state rep back in 2006, and I, I had the opportunity of going to a, a meeting at the, at the State House of Representatives and and in this big meeting room with a bunch of candidates, and they hauled out uh, to introduce to us to show us the support staff. And it was it was huge. It was accountants and lawyers, and I'm going, holy moly! I don't want all of these people like helping professional me. boxers. It was insane to me. Yeah. It, it wasn't it wasn't even the state reps that that concerned me. It was the bureaucratic support staff that was overwhelming. You got I say that because all of these people justify their existence by coming up with this nonsensical logic that's pretty far away from mainstream reality, America. What was that phone number again, Jim? It was 855-357-1911. Folks, we will see you and talk to you next Sunday. Thank you very much and have a great week.